If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. To solve part A, we can refer to the following equation from chapter 15. We have the acceleration of the block equaling negative its angular velocity squared times its position. We'll go ahead and solve this for the angular velocity. And we'll do that by dividing both sides by negative x. And then, of course, we can take the square root of both sides. Now, the angular velocity at this particular time will be whatever the acceleration and position of the block is at this particular time. And those values were given to us in the question. So we'll go ahead and plug in x as well as a. And when we calculate that, we get a value of approximately 35.07 radians per second. And the reason that we wanted to find the angular velocity of the block is that because there's a nice relationship between it and the frequency. And that relationship is displayed right here. So all we have to do is plug in the value we just calculated, divide by 2 pi, and that will give us the frequency of the oscillation of the block. And when we compute that, we get a value of 5.58, and the standard unit of frequency is hertz, or cycles per second. So that would be the correct answer to part A. We next examine the following relationship between angular velocity, the spring constant k, and the mass of the oscillator. And since we're looking to solve for the mass, we can actually square both sides of this equation. We'll then multiply both sides by the mass m, and then divide by omega squared. We can use the value for omega that we calculated earlier, as well as the given spring constant of 400 newtons per meter to calculate the mass. And when we do that, we get a value of 0.325 kilograms. So that would serve as the mass of the block. Now, through the conservation of energy, we know that the total energy of the block at a turning point, and a turning point would simply be when the block is at its maximum displacement or maximum position, that total energy should equal the sum of the kinetic and spring potential energies at any point. Now, our objective here is to find the amplitude, and that amplitude is represented by the symbol xm. So we're trying to solve this equation for x sub m. We could divide each term by 1 half, divide each term by k, and then finally take the square root of both sides of the equation. We can easily calculate x sub m now because we know the mass, we know the speed at this particular instant that was given to us in the problem, k was already noted, and then x once again is the position of 0.1 meters at this particular moment. So we'll plug in all the known values. And when we do that, we get a value of approximately 0 0.400 meters. So that would represent the amplitude or maximum displacement of the block. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.